faculties first. The rest of the faculty. Faculty. Welcome to faculty. Before the faculty. Please join me in welcoming the Zucker School of Medicine 2023 graduates. proceeding in and will be followed by the graduates. Thank you, and welcome to our ninth graduation as a school, and my first as dean. You can, all sit. You can sit now. <laughs> I want to take a moment to welcome everyone. Thank you for supporting our graduates every minute along the way. You should all be very proud of how well they've represented themselves and their families and friends and this school. I would also like to thank the faculty and all the staff at the School of Medicine for helping to create a great place to learn and work. Everyone 
from Jeff and Jake and Carmen and Keith who maintain our building to our curriculum support team and all the other professional administrative staff and our volunteers who dedicate their time to helping all of us and our incredible team of deans in doing our major role, preparing our graduates for the next phase of their professional journey. Each and every person has a role, and we all work together. Please join me in thanking them. Please also allow me to take a moment to introduce and acknowledge a few special people. First, Mr. Donald Zucker. who has generously supported medical education in our school and whose extraordinary generosity has helped make medical education a reality for many who otherwise might not have that opportunity. <laughs> Susan Poser, President of Hofstra University, and Michael Dowling, President and CEO of Northwell Health. Donald Schaefer, trustee and chair of the board at Hofstra University and co-chair of the joint board of the School of Medicine. Charlie Reardon, provost of Hofstra University. Dr. Lawrence Smith, our dean emeritus and founding dean, whose leadership and vision guided us through the past 15 years. and all the deans and vice presidents of Hofstra University and the Zucker School of Medicine, our entire faculty, and of course, the family and loved ones of our graduates. <laughs> Last but not least, Dr. Kathy Gallo, the founding dean of the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. I thank Kathy last, not because I wanted to make a spectacle of it, but because I wanted to make a special note that this is National Nurses Week, and thank our nurse colleagues for all they do to partner with our physicians to provide the most expert and compassionate patient care. Congratulations. In addition, I'd like to identify individuals honored by the class of 2023. Our Grand Marshal, Dr. Lou Miller, Assistant Dean for Career Advising, who led in the entire procession and is our inaugural faculty winner chosen by the graduating class of the Leonard Tao Humanism and Medicine Award. The faculty marshals, Dr. Linda Shore Lesserson and Dr. Joe Canigliaro, are faculty council co-chairs and leaders who led in the faculty. Our graduate marshals, Dr. Ellen Miller, recipient of the first 100 Weeks Teacher of the Year Award, and Dr. Guy Sugiyama, winner of the second 100 Weeks Teacher of the Year Award who led in our students. <laughs> Lastly, I bring to your attention various medals and cords some of our graduates are wearing. In addition, some faculty are also wearing medallions hung on a blue and gold ribbon, signifying membership in the Academy of Educators. Students have on a variety of medals, cords for distinction in research, community service, and a number of other special awards, Gold Humanism Society, Alpha Omega Alpha, and all of this is listed in your program, and there'll be a small quiz when we get done with this. <laughs> so we will now begin our 2023 graduation with an invocation delivered by Chaplain Simi Ahmed from the Northwell Health System, followed by the national anthem led by our graduate, Woodland Daniels. Will everyone please rise? most merciful. Praise be to God, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. You do we worship and your aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. God Almighty, we thank you for bringing us together on this special day to celebrate and honor the graduates of the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra University. We ask you, Lord, 
to look with favor upon the administration of Hofstra University for providing an environment conducive to learning. We ask you, God, to look with favor upon the faculty for their dedication in educating these students. We invoke your blessings upon the graduates assembled here today. We pray that you will strengthen these graduates, purify their intentions, and help them use the knowledge and skills they have acquired here with confidence but without arrogance, with both serious determination and good humor, with a strong moral demand upon themselves but without judging others, with both rigorous intellect and loving hearts. Help them to serve your world and its people with compassion, humility, and generosity. Help them to practice medicine with the utmost compassion and selflessness. Please grant them wisdom to make the correct diagnoses, and please put healing in the treatments they offer their patients, as you are the ultimate healer. Help them to choose right over wrong, ethics over convenience, and truth over popularity. May they travel the path of integrity without looking back, for there never is the wrong time to do the right thing. Amen. Finally, my congratulations to the graduates, their parents, loved ones, and friends and guests uh, on this special day. May God be with you all. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. And now, Woodland Daniels, a graduate of this class, will be singing our national anthem. Was fantastic. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce President Susan Poser to address the class. Well, good afternoon. My name is Susan Poser. I'm the president of Hofstra University. Congratulations to the class of 2023. It is a privilege to welcome you and your families and friends to this commencement ceremony and have the opportunity to offer my heartfelt congratulations and wish you well on this day that marks a milestone in your professional and your personal lives. I hope that you are all feeling tremendously proud today. The class of 2023 has succeeded in the face of unique challenges. In your first year, your experience of medical school was interrupted by a once in a hundred year pandemic that challenged you at all levels, including perhaps how you conceived of the profession that you were entering. The pandemic hit while you were in your first year as medical students, and as you entered your clinical rotations in the fall of 2021, 
you were challenged to heal others while still trying to stay, stay, stay safe yourselves and worrying surely about the safety of your family and your friends. You have succeeded, not only because of your own personal fortitude and humanity, but also because of all that you learned during the years at Zucker, where you became clinicians on your very first day as medical students, starting with EMT training, and then continuing to interact with patients in the clinic even during those first two years, an experience that the unique curriculum at the Zucker School offers. And here you are on the other side of that experience. I was present with you and your families and friends on match day at the medical school, and I felt the pride and joy in the room. You are so ready for your future, and the world needs you and will be so much the better for it. You've been part of something very special through this unique partnership between Hofstra University and the Northwell Health System. And as you leave here and go out to interact with new physicians who have not had the benefit of this intensely experiential and group-based learning, you will even better understand the value of your medical education. Finally, you are now part of the legacy of the Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell, and I hope you will come back often as you move through your careers and share your talents as alumni and mentors to those coming up behind you. We will always be your university, and we will always be here for you. So again, congratulations and Godspeed. Thank you, President Poser. And it's now my privilege to introduce the President and CEO of Northwell Health, Mr. Michael Dowling. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And while it has been said numerous times, uh, let me say it again, congratulations. This, I know, is a culmination of a dream and a major milestone. But I also want to say a special congratulations again to the families, all the relatives, the spouses, the partners, the children, because to get to where you are today requires a cast, large group of people that have helped, supported, and guided you. So this is a congratulations to everybody because today belongs to you specifically, but also to everybody. And that includes also the faculty and the staff at both uh, Northwell and at Hofstra. So congratulations. And you know, today um, you take a giant step into a life of wonderful opportunity, but also one of extraordinary obligation and responsibility. Just think of all of the people who will be the beneficiaries of what you do. Families saved, lives saved, illness prevented, wonderful results from new discoveries and therapies, hope restored, families' lives extended, families brought together, children brought in to the world. Just think about the influence. Think about the importance of all of this. This is why you moved into this field, and this is why you are who you are. And as you all know, and as you have experienced over the past couple of years, there has been extraordinary success in medicine over the last number of decades. Science has expanded, new information has expanded, but we've got some issues mental health issues, access issues, etc., etc. You now 
as you continue in your journey, are about to become the architects of how to improve all of this, how to take what is and make it better. But there is more good than there is bad. And while we have some problems in healthcare, I'm always reminded of Ralph Waldo Emerson's statement who said, do not be constrained by your problems. Be led by your dreams. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. It's now my honor to introduce Alexander Martin, the graduate's choice. as their speaker this year to address the graduating class. Hello, class family, faculty and staff, friends. Congratulations. Congratulations to the class of 2023 and congratulations to the loved ones who put up with us throughout med school. To all the friends, we told we had two back-to-back 24-hour -back shifts because we secretly didn't want to go out that weekend. Thank you for your understanding and patience. To the family who asked, we wanted dinner 20 times while we were studying for step one in our rooms. Thank you for your love and support and thank you for being here today. We did it. We laughed together, cried together, faced COVID together, watched teaching faculty who were on vacation struggle to position their Zoom cameras together. <laughs> Throughout our four years, we worked hard. And we supported each other. But this, this is just the beginning for us as newly minted physicians. And before, before we go our separate ways to take up our residencies across the country, I want to share some thoughts with you. Some of my closest non-medicine friends recently in included me in a shared note where we, mostly they, write down funny idioms from the corporate world. Things like, not my monkeys, not my circus, don't sell beyond the clothes, or uh, picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. I decided I wanted to make my own medical version, and though much less funny than the corporate version, one of the ones I heard that stuck with me is, start low, go slow. Now this is an invitation to take the low road, as Michelle Obama mentioned, as tempted as we may be when we get a page saying that our patient on dialysis is a low sodium of 133 at 3 in the morning. And though it is eerily reminiscent of the 2013 Drake hit single, Started from the Bottom, the phrase actually came about when discussing how to begin using antipsychotic medications within patients. However, I found it as broad application. Start low, go slow. In brief, start from first principles and take your time in proceeding. For example, we are lucky enough to have a class of diverse interests and culture, interests, <clears throat> sorry, cultures, viewpoints, and cooking skills. We have among us EMTs and singers, dancers and writers, musicians and hikers, crossfitters and foodies, among others. All things we learned about each other as we discussed our past weekends during weekly Monday pearls. However, as we begin residency, time might begin to slip away from us. But we as a class have been asked to adapt to new and fluid situations more than once. Adapting to a new schedule and not letting the perfect be the enemy of good is key. Maybe we can't work the tutoring company for six hours a night anymore. Maybe you refuse to bend on a night once a month where you go out dancing. Maintaining contact with our interests and practices gives us our identity. Be intentional and methodical about creating time for these things. Start small and be willing to slowly adapt and evolve as our lives evolve. Another example, some people doubt that we can or should be both doctors and healthcare policy advocates. That if we want to be involved in changing healthcare policy, we should hang up our white coats and go to Capitol Hill. We'll leave it to the MBAs and we should just practice the medicine. I've seen our classmates advocate for policy changes and we all know residents who are Capitol Hill right now advocating for changes they believe in. How did they get there? 
Start low and go slow. Focus on your interests. Start small and build. We have classmates who live and die to make sure women's issues and LGBTQ causes are protected and advanced in the medical school curriculum. We have classmates who lobby for the creation of a committee to help build a tr school truly designed for equity and the just teaching of medicine. We have classmates who help students work with communities that are harder to access on Long Island. We should be proud. This activism wasn't a long con to get into residency. It wasn't just a resume. We did these things because they mattered to us and we can continue to do them, all while learning the medicine. No matter your political positions, we didn't train for all this time to be told that medical and surgical decision making was exclusively a judicial power. Finally, we all have a little imposter syndrome to varying degrees. I know imposter syndrome and how it undermines you, but for a long time I thought I was a true imposter. Statistically, I shouldn't be here like five times over as a black male. I'm sure I'm not alone in having felt this way for any given reason. All of us have doubts sometimes about whether our role as a physician is something we're entitled to or ready to have. It feels like only yesterday we were trying to convince Dr. Nosralla that the MRI on our oral anatomy exam was showing an elbow, not a knee, or a knee, not an elbow, I'm not sure. Uh, and I still wonder sometimes if anybody actually felt or believes we all felt the ovary on our very first try during clinical simulations. We've come very far since then. But are we really going to be the ones to implant the pump directly into someone's heart? Guide a razor thin wire upstream to quell an emergent GI bleed? Read an x-ray that determines whether or not someone has breast cancer? Or determine the future of a child's life by sectioning, fixing, and reading a slide with a bone marrow sample? How do we get there from here? Start low and go slow. Our future is cardiologists, anesthesiologists, bariatric and plastic surgeons, psychiatrists, pediatricians, ophthalmologists, or any specialty may seem distant. We don't get to expertise suddenly. It comes from learning step by step. It comes from patience and determination and a deep-seated belief that each of us belongs right where we are seated today and right where we are headed tomorrow. A lesson I've learned again and again from you all and from the Zucker School of Medicine. Before we go, I just want to acknowledge people who couldn't be here. The family, friends, and loved ones taken too soon by illness, COVID, those fighting battles right now, physical or mental, and those that were too great a distance in Africa, Asia, Europe, or even stuck on the Jackie Robinson Parkway. I want to shout out the Zisong community that support us all. I especially want to shout out Dr. Bagaranye, who has been an advocate for me and many others since day one. Our classmates may remember her from FCB, one of our courses that we take during the first and second year of med school. And she now faces a battle of her own. I know many of my classmates are happy to support her, as she did for us. Dr. B, we love you and wish you a speedy recovery. To all you who are here today, thank you for having me here as your speaker. And thank you for listening. One step at a time, start low, go slow. Thank you, Alex. And now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome to the podium Dr. Kevin Tracy, my friend and colleague, the President and CEO of the Feinstein Institutes of Medical Research, Executive Vice President of Northwell Health, Professor of Neurosurgery and Molecular Medicine at the Zucker School of Medicine. A graduate of Boston College and Boston University School of Medicine, a card-carrying board-certified neurosurgeon, Kevin changed career paths after a young child who seemingly was recovered from a severe burn suddenly died in his arms from overwhelming sepsis. He was determined to unravel the secrets and causes responsible and embarked on an incredible career in research, helping the world better understand inflammation and the molecular basis of sepsis. He has made innumerable discoveries and advances, including unraveling the secrets of how the brain and nervous system controls the human body, and arguably founding and defining the field of bioelectronic medicine, literally curing disease without medications by programming neural signals to various organs. His work is published widely from Nature and Science, highlighted through Scientific America, 60 Minutes, the New York Times, the recipient of numerous honorary degrees, including Hofstra University. It is an honor to welcome Dr. Tracy to address the class of 2023.
Thank you, Dean Battinelli. And we are friends, which is probably why you hid my speech. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Hello, and congratulations to our graduating students and to the parents, partners, family, friends, and faculty who supported you on the journey you've completed. Fifteen years ago, the leadership of Northwell Health and Hofstra University brought forth a new medical school dedicated to inspiring diverse, promising students to lead and transform medicine for the betterment of humanity. Today, as we gather here to celebrate you, the members of the ninth class, it is striking to think about how the world has changed since this medical school was founded. Today's world has been reshaped by a global pandemic, artificial intelligence, globalization of the economy, climate change, ever-present social media, and staggering innovations in medical therapies and healthcare. Yes, you say, change is the way of the world, and it has always been so. But today, the rate of change is accelerating. Today, major world changes occur faster than any time in human history. And these changes will directly influence those of you beginning your new careers as graduate physicians. My fervent hope is that you are guided by learning from success. There have been many other commencement speeches about the importance of learning from failure. And this is, is of course, this is important and appropriate because when you fail, big or small, you inevitably take the time to review what went wrong. But do you review what went right when you do succeed? This is actually a much harder and more difficult thing to do. But from reviewing what happened in success, studying how you adapted to change, and recognizing the lucky breaks and wonderful people that crossed your path, you will have a much better appreciation for how you got here today. There are many reasons it is difficult to learn from success. Because success fosters an environment that encourages a loss of humility. This is something to resist at all costs. And when experiencing success, it's also crucial to keep your balance. Sir William Osler, the father of modern medicine, in his famous essay, Equanimitas, address the importance of cultivating an attitude of calmness and equanimity in the face of the stresses and challenges of medical practice. He believed that a healthy balance would help physicians to provide the best possible care for their patients and to treat each patient with the same level of care and attention regardless of their background or social status. I know, it can be difficult to maintain the balance between commitments to family and friends, work, health, hobbies, personal growth, and giving back to the community. But in a world changing faster than ever, it has never been more important for you to find the balance that is just right for you. As Charles Darwin taught us, a changing world is the force causes species to adapt. The species that do adapt flourish and evolve. In my 40 years of practicing medicine and science, I've had to adapt to dozens of roles and responsibilities as a neurosurgeon, lab head, immunologist, neuroscientist, author, public speaker, grant writer, entrepreneur, teacher, fundraiser, institute president, startup guy, inventor, husband, father, and most difficult of all, coach of kitty kick girl soccer teams. <laughs> what I learned is that the only way to adapt and maintain balance is by stopping thinking and making a plan. I learned that making a plan is difficult and time consuming. It, it's been the most difficult task that I've had to do throughout my career. But I also learned that setting personal goals across a balanced spectrum is the most important task in my career. 
So on a day like today, celebrating your personal success, I ask you to begin cultivating the habit of stopping and reviewing just how is it you got here. Do not assume that your talent is the reason you succeeded. Look hard for the contributions played by good fortune, mentors, collaborators, and environmental events, because if you are like me and every other successful person I have ever met, these also contributed to your success. Having faith in your own ability is critical, but don't let the belief in yourself present you, prevent you from learning things about yourself. What you did right was in the past, in that old previous world, not the changed world we live in today. And after thinking it through, maybe you wouldn't change a thing. And that's also fine. But maybe you will recognize how to modify old tools for new future tasks. Then when you're done spending an hour or so working through this exercise, then it's time to sit back and imagine. Einstein said that imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Take the time to imagine what a balanced success looks like in your life. A life that balances family and friends, work, health, hobbies, personal growth, and giving back to the community. Then, using a pen and paper, set goals for each of these. Not just for work, but for all the components of your balanced life. Your life will be richer for this, and your patients will be better off as well. And let me repeat, please write your lists on paper because evidence from neuroscience and cognitive behavioral studies shows that writing things on paper activates more of the brain serving attention and memory than does typing notes into a computer or an iPhone. I admit, thinking and planning is hard work because it requires stopping to plan short and long-term goals on a regular basis, but do it weekly. This is the Waze or Google map of your life and you don't want to get lost now that you've succeeded. That's how to see clearly through all the noise in this changing world, by stopping and thinking about what it is you really want. Although it's difficult, I know you can do it. You have a large brain. Trust me, I'm a brain surgeon. <laughs> the diploma you're about to receive is a sign of the rising tide carrying your ship. As Shakespeare wrote, there is a tide in the affairs of men, which at the flood leads on to fortune. As you embark on your individual journeys, you have the power to imagine your next course, one that only you can plan, because only you can decide how to adapt and balance your goals for a long ride on your tide of future successes. Congratulations and thank you. President Poser, I have the honor now to present to you the students who have satisfied all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy in the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell. And I am pleased to join with the faculty in recommending that you confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy upon these graduates. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University, and by the Regents of the State of New York, and upon the recommendation of the Provost, Dean Battinelli, and the faculty of the Medical School, I am delighted to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Congratulations. Dr. Betty Diamond, Program Director of the PhD and MD-PhD programs will now announce the graduates Please join us on the podium with your principal investigator to Hood when your name is called. John David Un, Acute and Latent Effects of Anesthesia in Transgenic Models of Tauopathy. His advisors were Peter Davies and Jeremy Koppel. Sadly, Peter Davies died in 2020, and we are all left without a dear friend and John minus one mentor. So come.
Dr. Anita Eng, Temporal Dynamics of CLL Cells, Single Cell Analysis of Intraclonal Fractions Differing in Time Since Cell Birth, and her advisor, Nicholas Chirazi. Muhammad Shoaib, the examination of metabolic and lipid dysfunction in plasma as a function of cardiac arrest pathophysiology facilitated the development of a novel treatment approach using lysophosphatidylcholine and his advisors, Lance Becker and Junwa Kim. Congratulations, and let us now recite together the Oath of the Scientist, and will all PhDs, MD graduates with distinction in research, and all researchers rise and join the graduates in this tradition. So let's recite together. By accepting my Doctor of Philosophy degree, I earnestly assert that I will apply my scientific skills and principles to benefit society. I will continue to practice and support a scientific process that is based on logic, intellectual rigor, personal integrity, and an uncompromising respect for truth. I will treat my colleagues' work with respect and objectivity, and be a collaborator within the scientific community, sharing knowledge and resources resulting from my research. I will teach these scientific principles to my students. I will seek to increase public understanding of the principles of science and its humanitarian goals. These things I do promise. President Poser, I have the honor now to present to you those students who have satisfied all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Medicine in the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell, and I am pleased to join with the faculty in recommending that you confer the degree Doctor of Medicine upon these candidates. Um, graduates, why don't you stand up if you're able? Graduates, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra and by the regents of the state of New York and upon the recommendation of Dean Battinelli and the faculty of the medical school, I am delighted to confer upon you your degree, Doctor of Medicine. Congratulations. Thank you, President Poser. We now ask that each of the graduates come to the stage to be introduced by Drs. Gino Farina, Assistant Dean for Clinical Preparation for Residency, Dr. Melissa Pawalczyk, Assistant Dean for the Advanced Clinical Experience, Dr. Marie Petrizzo, Assistant Dean for Medical Education, or Dr. Robert Roswell, Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, to be hooded by Dr. Samara Ginsberg, Vice Dean and Dean for Education, or a family member with the same degree, or to be, and to be recognized by Dr. Susan Poser, President of Hofstra, Michael Dowling, President and CEO of Northwell Health, and receive their diplomas. Graduates, please join us on the podium when your name is called. Dr. Kelly Ray Abel, degree conferred with distinction in research, recipient of the Department of Urology Graduation Award, presented and hooded by Dr. Jane S. Cho.
Dr. Bidur Alassan is not here today. <laughs> Dr. Ariel Aminov. Dr. Julian Azar, recipient of the Department of Medicine Graduation Award, presented and hooded by Dr. Saeed Ibrahim. Dr. Shirag Bhatia. Dr. Tanzim Buya, degree conferred with distinction in research. Dr. Tanzim Buja was going to be hooded by his father, Dr. Tofuko Buja, a really beloved and well respected Northwell physician who unfortunately passed away in December of 2020. Cannot be here with us in person. He's here with us in spirit and in full pride. He is also the recipient of the Department of Neurosurgery Award and was hooded by Dr. Kevin Tracy. Dr. Miriam Aviva Blumenthal. Dr. Zachary Allen Bordeaux, degree conferred with distinction in research, uh, who is unfortunately cannot be with us today. <laughs> Doc, Dr. Matthew S. Brayman, being hooded by his spouse, Dr. Megan Brayman. Dr. Joshua Ruti Chartok. <laughs> Dr. Christina A. Coti, degree conferred with distinction in research. Dr. Christopher Chrysostomo. <laughs> Dr. Woodland Daniel. Dr. Anise Michelle Diaz, degree conferred with distinction in community. 
<laughs> engagement. Dr. Samantha Jo Donovan, recipient of the Department of Surgery Graduation Award, being presented and hooded by Dr. Jared Houston. <laughs> Dr. Priya Duveri. Degree conferred with distinction in research, being hooded by Dr. Chernovas Duveri. Dr. Peter Jogas, who could not be here with us today. <laughs> Dr. Justin Michael Esposito, being hooded by his father, Dr. Michael Esposito. Also, the recipient of the Dean's Recognition Award, being presented by Dr. David Badnelli. Dr. John David Un, receiving both an MD and PhD degree. <laughs> Dr. Austin Galahad Fisher, degree conferred with distinction in research, being hooded by his father, Dr. Conrad Fisher. Dr. Madison C. Frazier. <laughs> Dr. Nirupa Galagadera. Dr. Avinash Karlapati. <laughs> Dr. A, Dr. Dwayne A. Gentle. <laughs> Recipient of the Leonard Tao Humanism Med in Medicine Award being presented by Dr. Smith and the recipient of the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation Graduation Award being presented and hooded by Dr. Adam Stein. Dr. Nicole Ashley Goodbitch, degree conferred with distinction in community engagement, recipient of the Department of Dermatology Graduation Award, award presented and hooded by Dr. Ankuri Desai. Say it again. Sure. <laughs> 
Dr. Jonathan Guevara. Dr. Emma Caitlin Gugerty. Dr. Rohan Ram Gupta, hooded by his father, Dr. Balaji Gupta, and his uncle, Dr. Rohit Malik. <laughs> Dr. Avi Haas. Dr. Tabia Angelica Hofstadter. <laughs> Dr. Danielle Anesta Lowell Howell. Dr. Tyler Humphrey, degree confirmed with distinction in research. Dr. Shelby Isaacs, recipient of the Student Leadership Award, award presented by Dr. Linda Shore Lesserson and the Department of Pediatrics Graduation Award, award presented by Dr. Charles L. Schlein, Included by her fiance, Dr. Sam Fleischer. <laughs> Dr. Darius B. Jonish. Dr. Rachel L. Jujan Roche, degree conferred with a distinction in research. Dr. Ben Jung, degree confirmed with distinction in research, hooded by his father, Dr. Chan Yil Jung. <laughs> Dr. Victoria Keir, hooded by her husband, Dr. Graham Keir, and accompanied by her son, Ethan Keir. <laughs> Dr. Ryan Michael Kenny recipient of the Michael G. Gutenberg MD Award in Emergency Medicine, award presented by and hooded by Dr. Lance Becker. <laughs> Dr. Syra Khan hooded by her grandfather, Dr. Bashir Jilani. <laughs> Dr. Adam Karidli, Hooded by his father, Dr. Nabil Karidli. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Richard Joseph Claris III, degree conferred with distinction in research. Dr. Emily Catherine Kalatka. Dr. Morgan Crush, recipient of the Department of Anesthesia Graduation Award, award presented by and hooded by Dr. Linda Shore Lesserson. <laughs> Dr. Brittany Julia Quaite hooded by her father, Dr. Philip Quaite. <laughs> Dr. Alexandra Teresa Landau, recipient of the Department of Psychiatry Graduation Award, award presented by and hooded by Dr. Timothy Kreider. Dr. Nathan A. Lau, recipient of the Department of Ophthalmology Graduation Award, award presented by and hooded by Dr. Richard Bronstein. Dr. Eric Chuck Hay Lee. Dr. Christian W. Leung. Dr. Andre Y. Liu. Dr. D. Luo. Dr. Arif. I. Mahmoud, hooded by his mother, Dr. Farzana Afroza. Dr. Tanya P. Mamdoui, recipient of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery Graduation Award. The award is being presented by Dr. Nicholas Gaglione, and Tanya is being hooded by her siblings, Dr. Kevin Mamdoui and Dr. Tara Mamdoui. Dr. Alexander A. Martin. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Michael Thomas McDonough, hooded by his parents, Dr. Alyssa McDonough and Dr. Thomas McDonough. Dr. Josue Minaya, recipient of the Department of Science Education Graduation Award. The award is being presented by and being hooded by Dr. Joanne Willey. Dr. Ariana Mohammed. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Moirano. Dr. Nicholas J. Montanaro, who is not with us today. <laughs> Dr. Fatima Mozawala, hooded by her aunt, Dr. Nadia Naz Amin. Dr. Gotham K. Nayar. <laughs> Dr. Zaim H. Nazir. Degree conferred with distinction in research, hooded by his father, Dr. Asa Nazir. Dr. Alexandra Norden, who could not be with us today. Dr. Stephen Joel Para, degree conferred, conferred with distinction in community engagement. Dr. Antonio J. Pereira. Dr. Courtney J. Pinna. Dr. Tamir Pinasov. <laughs> Dr. Lindsay Ray Pliskin, hooded by her father, Dr. Michael Pliskin. Dr. Nicole Radova, recipient of the Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine Graduation Award. The award is presented by and being hooded by Dr. James Crawford.
Dr. Olivia Reyes, hooded by her father, Dr. Angelo Reyes. Dr. Aaron Joshua Ree, recipient of the Department of Cardiology Graduation Award, award presented by and hooded by Dr. Jeffrey T. Coven. Dr. Erica Rivera. <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth Rosen, hooded by her father, Dr. Hillel Rosen, accompanied by her children, Shira Schwartz, age two, and Lior Schwartz, six months old. Dr. Marianne Ruel. <laughs> Dr. Ian Rumble, recipient of the Department of Radiology Graduation Award. The award is presented and hooded by Dr. Jason Nadich. Dr. Darren Schiller. <laughs> Dr. Robert Charbet. Dr. Acacia Shepard. <laughs> and Dr. Mohammed Shoaib, receiving both medical degree and PhD. Dr. Samantha Siller. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Simpson, headed by his parents, Dr. Pamela Niklaus and Dr. Stephen Simpson. Dr. Junho Song, degree conferred with distinction in research. <laughs> Dr. Rebecca Sudam.
Dr. Gary Tan. Dr. Patrick Tierney, recipient of Department of Neurology Graduation Award, awarded is presented and hooded by Dr. Ronald Canna. <laughs> Dr. Kevin Tong. Dr. David Turkoff. <laughs> Dr. Arne Uthiakumar, who is the recipient of the Brand Sparks Humanism Award, who will be awarded as presented and hooded by Dr. Taranjeet Ahuja. Step down, step down. Step down. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Michael Barone. <laughs> Dr. Yiling Wang. Dr. Stephanie Williams, who will be hooded by her father, Dr. Daniel Williams. It's also the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology Graduation Award presented by Dr. Jill Rabin. Dr. Aaron Zhang, who is the recipient of the Department of Family Medicine Graduation Award, presented and hooded by Dr. Barbara Kieber. Dr. Ben Zhang. and Dr. Michelle Zhang. Okay, a big round of applause for the graduates of 2023. Okay, we're, we're almost there. So I now ask Dr. Ellen Perlman, Associate Dean for Professionalism and Doctoring Skills, to step forward and lead you in the oath. This is the second time you will be um, reciting this oath and hopefully many more to come. Um, may I please have the graduates and all physicians who would like to uh, repeat the oath of the physician together. Please rise. 
I swear to fulfill, to the best of my ability and judgment, this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death, and never abuse the power that has been bestowed upon me. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect not only the person, but a family and community. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, those sound of mind and body as well as the infirm. I will maintain the health of my own mind, body, and spirit so I am able to discharge my duties appropriately. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Perlman. A few closing remarks. First and foremost, to the graduating class, congratulations again. However, please stand, face the audience, and thank them all for your support and theirs. Fifteen years ago, as Kevin said, we began this journey to create a medical school for the future and to lead in this millennium. There are a few key ingredients necessary to even begin this journey. There needed to be a founding dean and visionary leader, and we're all forever grateful to Dr. Lawrence Smith for his years of dedication, hard work, and leadership. We needed students who wanted to learn medicine and, even more important, love medicine. Each and every year, we are fortunate enough to continually attract and recruit the best in the country. We needed a faculty with the expertise and passion for teaching and patient care. We have almost 5,000 faculty throughout the School of Medicine. But I dare to say the secret sauce has been the leadership and partnership between Hofstra University and the Northwell Health System. For those not familiar with medical school structures, this, in fact, is a unique partnership. Each organization contributing their expertise, talents, and resources in a complementary arrangement where the sum far outweighs the addition of the parts. Over the years, Dr. Smith and I have hosted innumerable visiting leaders and faculty from other medical schools to come learn about the successes of the curriculum. But we wind up spending more than half the time explaining about our unique partnership, one that other schools have tried to emulate but have not succeeded. So an enormous thank you to the presidents of these great institutions and their boards and all others who support us and recognize the value that they have created. <laughs> to the graduates, you have worked really hard and you have endured incredible challenges along the way. COVID, virtual learning, societal unrest, and the list goes on. And now you're doctors. That's the good news. The bad news is maybe that this journey is not even halfway over. You have four to seven years to pursue your chosen residencies and then many years ahead. But just like these past four years, they'll go by fast. And you'll be faced by perhaps an even harder journey. That journey is staying current and at the top of your game. A career in medicine is a lifelong journey. 
and the very best doctors are those who love medicine, who love the journey, and love honoring their patients and their profession by being the very best they can be each and every day for a lifetime. People frequently ask many of us whether we would do it all over again, all that hard work and at times sacrifice. And the answer is an emphatic and resounding yes. We, in fact, are jealous of your opportunity, not because we want to do all the hard work all over again, but rather for the journey and the chance to have all the countless discoveries and advances in medicine that we did not have, and importantly, that we could not offer our patients, many of whom suffered and died. I started my internship, like Kevin, just over 40 years ago. There are so many things we now take for granted that we didn't have when people were suffering. We had to sit and watch patients die from HIV before we even had a single medication or even knew that it was a virus. Patients debilitated by heart disease, long before we had angioplasty, PCI, stents, transplants, or even basic heart failure medications. There were no ACE inhibitors, calcium channel blockers, or certainly implantable defibrillators. We had no interventions to treat, to treat stroke. Heck, we barely had CAT scans. We didn't have finger sticks for glucose monitoring or O2 SAT monitors. We had no computers or EMR. Well, scratch that one. Maybe that one wasn't so good. Um, all kidding aside, the list goes on and on. You will have more hard work, but you will see discoveries and advances that we have not even thought of, and your patients are the beneficiaries. The school created was created to change the way education was delivered. The mindset was one that embraced not how could we do it or how it could be done, but rather always asked the same question over and over again. But what if we could? From the early EMT and clinical curriculum to the small group pearls, the elimination of multiple choice questions, advanced ultrasound skills, and the unique structure. But perhaps our greatest desire was to create an environment and culture where talented, ambitious students would learn to love medicine and learn to love learning. The future of patient care and discovery is in your hands, and the future of your career is bright. I'll leave you with something I heard the principal at one of my children's middle school classes tell her graduating class. She said, embrace and remember the 10 most important two-letter words in the English language. You can count with me. If it is to be, it is up to me. Always ask yourselves that question, but what if we could? Congratulations. Go out, continue to be great, and thanks for being you. Congratulations. So I invite all of you to join us at the School of Medicine for a celebratory reception. I ask the audience to remain in place until the academic procession of the stage party and graduates has exited. You can meet the graduates outside. Thanks again. Congratulations again.